all I've really got to film with is either my phone, which I haven't done anything but shorts with, and this Chromebook built-in camera, which gives us everything this fisheye, but I can't do anything about it. Maybe if I'm still doing this in six months or a year, I'll buy a camera of some kind. Um, today, I'm still reading Stevenson. I'm going to put this up. Today's the 27th. I'm going to put this up on May 1st, kick off my uh, Horror Mayhem Month, uh, whatever that's exactly called. More Robert Stevenson. He's such a joy to read this, Mr. Robert Louis Stevenson. I think it's, I hear people saying Robert Louis Stevenson. I always said Robert Louis Stevenson my whole life until I got on YouTube. So who knows? But man, I'm enjoying it. Anyway, in this collection, uh, I've read An Inland Voyage, which is a travelogue, wonderful. Treasure Island, wonderful adventure story. Uh, Jekyll and Hyde, I read uh, last month because I wanted to, I had the Spanish audio book and I wanted to familiarize myself with it. I figured it'd be a nice short one to listen to in Spanish to continue my studies there. And The Body Snatcher, I have read. Uh, Kidnapped and The Black Arrow. I might try and squeeze in before the end of the month. Or no, actually I can still do them next month because it's still uh, Spring into Adventure. It's going to be a two-month program now. Anyway, today I want to talk about The Body Snatcher and Jekyll and Hyde. Which are, are they the only uh, straight horror stories that Stevenson wrote? I don't know. Jekyll and Hyde, probably his most famous story, of course. Um, the Body Snatcher, which I, the direct uh, uh, motivation of, of doing this video today was because I just read The Body Snatcher last night. I enjoyed it very much. I was, I guessed rightly that it was about body snatching, big clue in the title, um, and that it was related uh, fictionalization of the Burke and Hare affair, of uh, the um, grave robbers and the, and the uh, vivisectionists, um, the, uh, the doctors who, who bought, who paid grave robbers to procure them corpses that they could experiment on when that was illegal in England, in Scotland. Um, reading the story, I realized I'd seen a movie of it, the Val Luton movie with Boris Karloff, uh, which I did a little research on later and said it was um, loosely based on the story. It seemed very similar to me, at least the way I remember the movie. It's not my favorite Val Luton movie. Um, because that's because so many of Val Luton's movies were so great. He produced the Cat uh, Cat People, uh, and I Married a Zombie, or I Walked with a Zombie. I think it was called uh, The Leopard Man. Many great films. Uh, the Seventh Guest was one, I think. Uh, the Body Snatcher was directed by Robert Wise. Uh, not my favorite director. Anyway, it was it was a uh, a good. Uh, movie, um, a great short story, very chilling. It has, it structures that fantastic structure that was so often used in that in this time of writing of a framing story where there's a bunch of guys sitting around an inn and they're talking about stuff that, and then uh, another person comes in who reminds someone of a certain story in their past and then, and then we're taken back to the past to the uh, days of this, um, the main character's student days as a medical student in which there's some body snatching going on. So I won't uh, relate any more of the plot there. It is, um, the end is a bit mystifying uh, in that there's kind of a, there is a supernatural element going on in the story which isn't, uh, always that common in in stories about grave robbers. Um, an, another uh, element of the story which is very common with uh, Victorian ghost stories is the, and I, I think this dates back all the way really to Frankenstein, to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, but there's a Conan Doyle uh, uh, 
ghost story. I think the lot 49, is that what it's called? What's it? No, it's not lot 49, lot 57, something like that. Uses the same kind of structure of, of, the, of the students, the mildly uh, uh, blasphemous students who are uh, delving into the secrets of science or the secrets of the past they shouldn't uh, be doing and, and pay a price for it. Uh, that's very cool. It's a very uh, well-written story, very uh, pretty short. I don't know why I hadn't encountered it before. I don't know which collection it's it's from originally. Jekyll and Hyde, of course, a very well-known story. Many uh, adaptions of that, including some adaptions that I I liked very much. Uh, I think my favorite's probably uh, Doctor Jekyll and and what's it called? It couldn't be called Ms. Hyde because of the Hammer movie. Oh, Dr. Jekyll and Lady Hyde, I think, where Dr. Jekyll turns into uh, a woman and uh, the woman is rep is presented as his sister, I think, to strangers. And it's a really good movie. It's obviously not a, a literal adaption. It's one of the later Hammer movies, but I always liked it a lot. And the early, early version that I never saw until this year with... Oh, what's the studio? I don't know. Anyway, Marion Hopkins plays, uh, is is uh, the lead woman in that film, and um, Freddie March plays Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and I've never really been a Freddie March fan, so I, I had never watched it, and it was hard to get for a while. In fact, I believe the, uh, the, stu the other studio, I think it was Universal, when they did their version with Spencer Tracy, they bought up all the copies of this really superior version of this story and destroyed them. So it was hard to find. Marion Hopkins, of course, a fantastic actress. That's why I finally sought it out a couple years ago because I happened to see a few films she was in, like uh, Becky Sharp, which is, uh, is that what they called it? I think so. It was an adaption of, of Vanny Fair, but I believe it was called Becky Sharp, and there's an adaption of an early... Uh, Faulkner novel that she's in. It's called The Story of... I don't know, I'm really getting off on movie stuff here. Anyway, she's incredible always, and she's incredible in this, and your heart really goes out to the character she plays in this that film adaption of Jekyll and Hyde because she is so horribly terrified and, and exploited and under the thrall of Hyde. So I didn't even mind Frederick March being in it that much. It's a, a really great pre-code pre movie. I recommend that. But also, of course, I recommend reading the story, Jekyll and Hyde, which the structure of is very different than I remember. I think I read it sometime when I was young. I remember having a copy that had a lecture in it, uh, one, of Nabokov, one of Nabokov's lectures on literature was on Jekyll and Hyde. And there used to be a really cheap edition, like a Tor Classic or Signer Classic or something that had that, that included that essay on Hyde in the uh, um, pocket paperback of that. And he talks a lot about, uh, Nabokov talks a lot about the, um, the setup, the doorways, uh, the, the separate entrance to the lab. Um, that kind of stuff that, that interested Nabokov about the story. But what interested me reading it this time was uh, how the story's slowly revealed through different sort of uh, documents. There's some straight, uh, there's some straight um, scenes shown, but there's also some testimonials given and and. Um, in different points of views and I was also struck by the fact that we see Mr. Hyde before we see Dr. Jekyll. The first part of the story is this strange, these, these friends of Dr. Jekyll's are on the street and they see this really hideous looking, uh, uh, cruel, obviously cruel and, and, uh, brutal looking man who tramples a, a young girl um, you know carelessly in his rush to get home and they stop him and they they confront him and he claims to be a, a, 
a friend of Dr. Jekyll's and uh, and uh, they want him to give some compensation for this 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 poor child that he that he trampled on and injured and a lot of the first part of the story is is, is us the readers being brought into the mystery of why this great upstanding citizen Dr. Jekyll would be would be um, involved with this this disgusting brutish person Mr. Hyde um, so it's more of a of a revelation whereas in the films you know it's always this doctor who's 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 kind of a uh, Dr. Frankenstein type you know again meddling in things men were not was, we're not meant to know and the, you know, we seem invent the potion and all this and so we go through the transformation but here it's a different kind of revelation it's we don't find out until very late that Jekyll and Hyde are the same person. And I suppose that was pretty well spoiled by the time they started making plays and movies about this, so they told it in a much more direct structure. But also a very good story. I think that, um, you know, maybe just because it's much more well-known, uh, I think that The Body Snatcher was... Uh, uh, had a more visceral impact on me of reading it for the first time. and But uh, that's my review of those stories. I'm looking forward to reading a lot of horror this month. I found some a uh, ton of other stuff that I, that I didn't realize I had on my Kindle. And there's so much on my Kindle. I found a bunch of Valancourt books. Valancourt does the paperbacks from hell. I bought a, a couple bundles of those. Um, I could read horror for probably the next four months, just reading horror. Um, but I won't. Well, maybe I will. Who knows? That's it. That's my review. I definitely recommend checking out anything by Robert Louis Stevenson. He's, like I said, such a pleasure to read, um, just sentence by sentence. And... Uh, the Body Snatchers and Jekyll and Hyde are two great examples of Victorian-era horror. Or earlier. I don't know who was king then or queen. <laughs>